So, let's see here. Well, in 1D, it's not, right? But in 1D, you always know the velocity is either that way or it's that way. And so you're just doing a backwards difference approximation, right, with respect to the velocity. But the velocity is always in one dimension. It's in two and three dimensions where it's different. Because in two and three dimensions, the velocity vector in 3D, the velocity vector can be any, every, any di di direction, and it may not necessarily perfectly align with the grid, right? If it perfectly aligns with the grid, it is just a backwards difference approximation, right? It's just a backwards difference approximation. But in the event, the general case, where, where the velocity vector doesn't align with the grid, then you have to do something else. Right? You have to sort of approximate the derivatives in a, in a special way. Yeah, some, some, yeah, some different approximation of the derivative. I mean, the simplest thing you could do is just take the i minus 1, j minus 1. You sort of always approximate the derivative as like a, as, you know, 45 degrees. You know. So it's, it's not going to be perfect, but that would be a better, better thing than doing nothing. So if we do everything, right, if we code this up in 1D, MPES, upwind the, upwind the relative permeabilities correctly, and we compare it to the Buckley-Levitt solution, the, the, uh, the orange line would be the Buckley-Levitt solution. So that's the front, the front propagating through. Now, of course, that's not a very good approximation, but that's because it only had 10 elements. Right? So if I go to 100 elements, Not bad. Let's see, if we go to 200 elements, <coughs> cells, grid cells. Oops. Oop. So, yeah, not so good, right? Yeah. So. What happened there was I went unstable. So I I divided, I made delta x too small without reducing delta t, and I I, I lost the stability criterion. Right? So in order to get get it back, um, let's see if I can get there like this. It's going to take longer to run. Ambitious. Oh, oh, there. I killed it just in time. Let's try if I, because I reduce it by 10. Let's try to just reduce it by half. So that's also why we went through all that Buckley Everett business, right? How how would we ever know we coded this thing up correct if we didn't have something to compare it to, right? Okay. 
Any questions? No, 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 no. That's not no, no, not what I meant. I, with respect to finite elements, the interpretation of numerical diffusion can be dispensed with, uh, you know, theoretically. Uh, that's what I meant. In two and three D, to do the correct upwinding, it can be difficult with finite elements, right? Because, I mean, with 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 finite. Uh, with, with finite differences, right? So with finite differences, assume I have a front moving through my material like this. How do I compute a derivative that's perfectly, how do I compute a derivative of this discretization that's perfectly in the reverse direction of my front? Can't do it, really. Right? I mean, I, you know, if I take the i minus j, then, then that computes the derivative that's, if I just take, use the, the, the i minus 1, j minus 1 from, say, this location, that computes a derivative that the, where the normal v, the normal velocity is 45 degrees, right? So that computes a derivative that's like this. So if I, if I use the i minus one j minus one, that's that's assuming the velocity field is like that, right? It's not perf. So it's close, and, and most of the time it might be good enough, right? And in the limit, right? If I refine this thing, it, it'll approach the right velocity field. But the difference is, in, in finite elements, I actually have a functional space on every element. It's not just a point in the center. Right? I have a function defined over the whole field. If I have a function defined over the whole field, I can compute the gradient of the field, and I can get the exact, you know, I can upwind it exactly. Yeah, yeah, but I mean it goes away in the limit, right? All, all of these, you know, the limit of delta x and delta y going to zero, you would, you'd approach the correct derivative. But, but yes, yeah, that's true. So if you had, in that, in your example, yeah, it would be very bad. So, yeah, I think. I heard some some situation. I can't remember the exact scenario, but there was some problem, some multi-phase problem, and the uh, student working on it was was experiencing oscillations, uh, and and I think maybe Dr. Leg or something was advising. He told him, "Well, you need to up upwind the relative permeabilities," and when he did, th the flow actually turned around and went the complete opposite direction. So the flow was going one way, and then and then. He corrected the, the oscillations in completely reverse directions and went, went the complete opposite way. So, yeah, you have to. Another reason that simple problems like Buck Buckley lever can be useful because they can you know, ensure that your code's doing the right thing. Okay, we'll stop there.